Hello. One of the features of a planar geometry is the fact that you can have many uh, similar triangles which aren't congruent. So you can have many triangles that have exactly the same angles but whose sides are actually different. In particular you can have a small equilateral triangle or a big equilateral triangle. Each equilateral triangle has all the angles equal to 60 degrees, however the sides may be as long as you wish. But if you look at the title of this talk, you will see that that's not the case on, on the sphere. In particular, it is not possible to have two similar triangles whose length, whose length of sides do not coincide. So any two triangles on a sphere that are similar are also congruent. If you give me the angles of a triangle, then the side lengths are already completely determined. We're going to prove that that's the case by using the law of cosines, the law of cosines, and uh, something a little more than that, namely the notion of dual triangles. We will not really have to know what dual triangles are. They're only a tool for us. So we're going to talk as little about them as possible to just get what we need, namely, we want to derive a formula that gives us the length of the sides when you give all the angles. So in other words, the angles should determine the sides, if that's really the case, that all similar triangles are congruent. So we want a formula that when you plug in all the angles, that gives you what the sides have to be. Okay, so the red sphere that's a, as always for us a unit sphere, and I drew on that sphere uh, a spherical triangle, namely this black triangle ABC. Um, you have its vertices A, B, and C, and just as before, we join each of the vertices with the center of the sphere, and that gives us vectors. They are unit length vectors that whose origin is always the center and whose endpoints are the vertices of the black spherical triangle. Then, um, I define vertices of the dual triangle in the following way. Namely, the vertex A star uh, is given by taking the cross product between the vector B and C, and then dividing by the length, so I get a unit vector. So that vector A, A star... Uh, the vector A star, its, its um, origin is the center of the sphere, and because its length is 1, that means it end its endpoint must lie somewhere on the sphere. So it gives you a point on the sphere. Same with the other two, right? Each of them are unit length vectors, and they originate at the center of the sphere, so they, and they point in some direction, so they end up uh, the endpoint is on the sphere. So this gives us three different points on the sphere, and these points are called the vertices of a dual triangle. Now, note that there's really no ordering on the vertices of this black triangle, right? I mean, I sort of used alphabetical ordering. A star is defined as B cross C, but I could have just defined it as C cross B, because there's nothing really that makes B and C ordered in any way. And then this becomes the negative of what I defined here. But then I do this symmetrically across all of those, um, and actually every one of them becomes the negative of the, of, the, of the ones that you have right here. So I get three other vertices. So really, there are two dual triangles to the triangle ABC. But I'm not going to worry about that. For me, just one dual triangle is enough. Okay, so the endpoints A star, B star, C star of the unit vectors A star, B star, C star respectively define the vertices of a spherical triangle that is called the dual triangle to the triangle ABC. As I said, it doesn't really matter for us how the dual triangle looks like. It's only a tool for us. But since we have it here, let's try to at least maybe look at where some of the vertices should lie. In this case, it's actually the easiest to locate the vertex C star. So I chose my vertex A to be the North Pole. And uh, to figure out C star, I need the A and the B. 
Okay, so the vector A is completely vertical. And this here, now this longitude, so this, this, this great circle here, you're supposed to imagine as being completely perpendicular to the, to the uh, plane of the board. Okay? So that here, that is supposed to be the one that's sticking out the most. Okay? So the AB great circle is the circle that's completely perpendicular to the plane of the board. So I have this vertical vector and then this B is a vector that points completely like this towards you, right? From away from the board. So I have A, B. So where is going to be A cross B? Well, first of all, I'm going like this, right? So I'm going um, clockwise here. So I'm actually screwing in. So I'm going in that direction. So that means the vector uh, C star or A cross B points in this direction, exactly horizontally. Now, if I divide by the length, so I'm looking at the vector C star, then this is pointing in this direction, it's a unit vector. So it starts at zero, right? And points exactly horizontally. So it ends up here. So that is the C star. So here is the vertex C star. Okay, that's the vertex of one of the vertices of the dual triangle. And you can figure out the rest of them by doing similar similar thing, right? You can just imagine again, the B is sticking out like this and the vector C is kind of like that. So um, you have to figure out, so the other vector, so that's B and C, right? So A star is gonna be either somewhere here or somewhere here. You have to figure out which way the cross product is actually pointing. But you can this way, sort of figure out uh, where all the vertices lie. Um, but for us, really, it's just a tool. And the one thing that I want us to notice that we're going to be using almost blindly is something you already know, that if I have two vectors on the sphere that start at the center of the sphere and end on the sphere, so there's a sphere going through that. Right? And these two vectors lie on the sphere. So if I want to know this length here from this point to that point, that's the same as this angle. That's the same as this angle. And if I do P dotted with Q, then that's the length of P times the length of Q times the angle between, cosine of the angle between them, so times cosine L. But because this length is 1 and this length is 1, I get this formula that I want to use several times here. That the cosine of the angle at the origin, uh, at the center of the sphere, is equal to just the dot product of the two vectors that give you the two endpoints of the arc on the sphere that this um, that this um, angle is, is cu cuts out. Okay, so given that, let's start to do. Let's actually do some calculation. So I'm going to first compute the following thing. <clears throat> Namely, I will denote um, so let a star now let's think about what, what I usually denote by little uh, a. The little a is, us is usually what I denote the, the, this distance here, right? The, the spherical distance between B and C, that would be my little a. The distance between A and C, that would be B. And um, this is the distance between A and B, so I denote it by little c. These are, of course, these angles here, right? That's the angle C, and so on. I don't want to put too much on this picture. So A is the, this, the spherical distance between B and C, so I'm just going to denote by a star the spherical distance 
distance on S2 between the vectors B star and C star. Okay? Um, it's, I'm sorry, it's between the vertices, not the vectors. Right, so A on the, on the regular spherical triangle denotes the distance between vertex B and vertex C. So I'm just going to write A star as the distance between the vertex B star and C star. But um, um, in that case, that of course is the angle. So if somewhere, I don't know exactly where on the sphere these two vertices lie, right? But imagine that... The, vec the, the vertex B, uh, B star lies, say, here, and the vertex C star lies here. So I'll change the name of these. So that would be then the vector B star. That would be the vector C star. Okay? And here, this, this would be the distance. That's the distance on S2 between B star and C star. So the um, so in other words that's A star. Right? So according to this this formula here, cosine of A star is gonna be just this vector dotted with that vector. So then cosine of A star is the vector B star dotted with the vector C star. Okay, again, because these are just two vertices of some spherical triangle, you don't worry anymore that that's the dual, dual spherical triangle. These are just vertices of some spherical triangle. I drew them here. Okay, so here they are. What's the distance between the vertices? That's that part of the circumference, which is the same as that angle. So if I connect the, or the, the center of the sphere with these vertices and write these as being the vectors, then according to this formula, cosine of that distance is just the dot product between these two vectors. Okay, so that's sort of the beginning of us, for our, of our formula. I'll still leave this up, but I'll continue with this calculation, because now, so I have cosine of a star, and I know what B star and what C star are. So, so this cosine of A star is C cross A that's B star dotted with C star. Okay? And now again I want to use the formula for the dot product of two cross products. So, <clears throat> if you recall what the formula was, it was the following. It was uh, C dotted with A, first these two, then these two, A dotted with B, minus, now C dotted with B, times um, A dotted with A. You definitely remember a formula using a formula like this when we were deriving the law of cosines. What about these here? Now you also remember the formula for the length of the cross product. It's the length of this first vector, which is 1, the length of the second vector, which is 1, and then the sine of the angle between them. So, but what's the angle between C and A? Here's the vector C. We're back to our original triangle. This is vector C, right? Um, and this is the vector A, well look, if you just look at that, the vector, the, the, the angle, of course this, the measure of this angle is the same as the measure of the, of the circumference on the sphere, so that's just B. So that's sine B, and the other one is sine C, right? Between A and the B, the, the length here of the circumference is C, which is the same as that angle, right? So that, this is the angle between A and B, and its measure is the same as the length of this, of this side. Okay, 
So now let's look at these dot products in the numerator. Um, C dotted with A, um, according to that formula, right? That's going to be the length, that, that's going to be the cosine of the angle between them. Or So I'm looking at C and A, the angle between them, the measure of the angle is B. Again, the measure of the angle between two vectors that originate at the center and then on the sphere is equal to the same as the length of this arc. So the measure of the angle AC is B, but it's supposed to be cosine B. So I write cosine B. AB, AB, the measure of the angle is C, so that gives me cosine C. Minus, between C and B, C and B, I get the I get cosine A. And finally, A is a unit vector. If I dot it with itself, I just get one. Divided by sine B, sine C. Um, okay, but now, once we have that, we can um, use the formula for the, the law of cosines. So if you remember the law of cosines, it would, uh, first of all, this would give you cosine of alpha, where alpha is the angle uh, between um, the sides. So it's, it's opposite of the, so it's, it's here, right? It's alpha would be the angle here between the side B and side C, so opposite of side A. Again, it's the angle between tangent lines. I'm not drawing the tangent line he lines here because I don't want to make the picture uh, um, have a lot of uh, writing on it too much. Um, so the um, law of cosines will tell you that cosine of, of this angle is equal almost something like this, except the numerator was switched. So that is actually negative cosine alpha. So this is law of cosines. If you look at the previous video, when we derived the law of cosines, you see that cosine alpha is actually cosine A minus cosine B cosine C divided by that. So this gives you minus cosine alpha. All right, so let's connect this all. So what did we get? So we have here that negative cosine alpha is equal to cosine A star. It connects the length, the cosine of the length of the side on a dual triangle, of a dual triangle, with cosine of an angle in the original triangle. So as both of these angles, alpha, well, and a star, these are numbers between 0 and pi, we get that if you have two angles, x and y, and their cosines are just exactly negative of each other, and the angles are between 0 and pi, we get that a star must be pi minus alpha. Okay, again. Just think about it. Cosine of A star being negative cosine alpha means that holds, as long as the angles are between 0 and pi, which they are. Okay, and similarly you get, so similarly you get B star is equal to pi minus beta, where beta is, I'm not going to draw it on the picture, beta is the angle the, of the spherical triangle opposite of the side B. So that's the angle here, beta. Maybe I can draw it, it's actually not that bad. Okay, and here's gamma. So C star would be pi minus gamma. Um, What turns out to be uh, also true is that if you actually use these, uh, if you define the angles of the dual triangle, 
by using the stars, you would also get that alpha star is pi minus a, beta star is pi minus b, gamma star is pi minus c. So I'm not going to define that. These would be the angles of the of the sphere of the dual triangle. And they can and, and then their measures can be read off actually these lengths a, b, and c. Okay, so let's erase this picture now. And let's go back to what we want to do. So I'm going to take now, um, I'm going to compute, so let's compute. Cosine of A. A is just a side of the original spherical triangle. So uh, by the law of co um, uh, so sorry, not by the law of cosines, but by the formula um, here, we get that cosine of A is cosine of pi minus um, alpha star, which is the same as minus cosine of alpha star for which I just use the normal law of cosines of A of the, for the dual triangle so of of cosines for it for the triangle the dual triangle and then by the law of cosines I just get that that's cosine a star minus cosine b star cosine c star divided by sine b star sine c star okay so it's the the dual triangle is just another spherical triangle this is an angle and so there's a minus sign in front of it right So this is an angle inside the uh, in the in the dual triangle. So I can use law of cosines for that triangle, and that's cosine of alpha star is equal to that by the law of cosines. Okay, but now um, I can um, come back to a star is pi minus alpha. B star is pi minus beta and C star is pi minus gamma divided by sine pi minus beta sine pi minus gamma. All right, so in fact, these cosines then revert to, to their negative, so that's minus cosine alpha, so this is minus cosine beta and this is minus cosine gamma so the two minus signs cancel and i just get um okay so this is there's a minus sign in front there's another minus here so these two minus signs cancel and just get this minus sign um and signs just give you sine of pi minus beta is the same as sine of beta and and this gives you um, sine of sine of pi minus gamma is sine of gamma. All right, so finally we get the formula.
So we get the following formula, cosine of A is equal to, um, while well, you just go through all this and you're here and you see the minus signs actually cancel, give you positive signs, so it's cosine alpha plus cosine beta cosine gamma divided by sine beta sine gamma. What does it tell you? Why is this so revolutionary? Um, you give yourself a spherical triangles, triangle with, with angles alpha, beta, gamma, and from this you compute the right-hand side and this tells you what A has to be. Cosine A has to be equal to that. You have similar formulas uh, for cosine B and cosine C I challenge you to actually write down these formulas by using symmetry here. Um, how you get cosine of B and cosine of C. It's not really the formula that's so important, although it's, I guess it's kind of interesting. For example, you can, you can now apply it to the triangle um, that has all degrees, be, all the angles being right angles and see what the sides have to be. Right? When we talked in the video of sides and angles, we talked about two triangles. One was a very little equilateral one, and one was a really big one that had all the angles being 90 degrees. So I asked, is it possible to have more such triangles that have all the angles being 90 degrees? Well, of course, you can just rotate and move this triangle uh, throughout the sphere. However, you cannot make it smaller. You cannot shrink it and you cannot make it bigger. Because if all these angles are 90 degrees, this is then predetermined, and that means A is determined. Okay? And by similar formula, B is determined and C is determined. So the angles in a triangle completely determine the sides in a spherical triangle. So any two similar triangles are actually congruent. If you give yourself all the triangles, oh, sorry, all the angles, then you know all the sides.